I'm, oh, I'm Will from Blizzard. Hi. From Blizzard Lighting. Uh, hopefully you recognize me and my mustache. Uh, so yeah, this is the uh, final few minutes of YouTube PJ's Live Midwest. Uh, we brought a bunch of stuff, but one of the things that we brought uh, that I love to show you in a little bit more detail is the Eclipse DMX. It's a uh, software hardware package. This is the hardware interface. It is a pretty little black uh, extruded aluminum box. It does have a three and five pin DMX uh, connector on it and then USB to go to the computer. Uh, this is the software piece that comes with it. As you can see here on the uh, screen, it's optimized for use with uh, touch screen computers, so it works great with those. Um, the only thing I've got connected to it right now is this Torrent 90 moving head over here, but I'll try to walk you through uh, a few of the features. Uh, first of all, probably the most important thing that people like to know is how much it costs. Uh, uh, minimum advertised price on it is $3.99, so it's a very, very good deal. Uh, we designed it to be competitive with uh, some of the other guys out there. Uh, I think it has uh, every bit as many features, and it's uh, definitely a little bit less expensive. And you were saying earlier that you can also download the software to try it yep. and, and yeah. really get comfortable with it. Yeah, if you go to our website, blizzardlighting.com, uh, you go up to Products and uh, click on uh, DMX Controllers, and uh, there's a link there for Eclipse DMX. Take that right to the product page, and you can download from there. Otherwise, I believe right now on the bottom of the website there's also a little uh, blurb about Eclipse DMX you can click on that and it'll take it there too. Okay. Um, but uh, just real quick some of the features. This is the playback panel. Uh, the software is divided up into two main screens. There's playback mode and programming mode. If I tap over here on programming mode it takes me that. Tap to playback mode it goes back. Each one of these buttons here is a, a sequence that I've pr programmed previously. Uh, you can have basically unlimited number of sequences. You can divide them up into pages. So you see here I have uh, two pages programmed with different stuff. Um, you can arrange them any way you, that you want. Yeah, it just depends on your personal preference. You can click each one indiv individually, or you can shift click multiples at the same time. You can also create multi-buttons, like see how these say multi here, mm -hmm. and where one of these will trigger more than one sequence at the same time. And you can trigger as many as uh, as many as you like. Uh, at some point your computer may start to be slow, but... Okay, so with one touch you can yeah. trigger a lot of things exactly. at once. Okay. Yeah, all the cues are uh, transparent, so they only affect the things that are programmed into that cue. So for instance, if I program a cue for the Torrent 90, and I also have a bunch of Storm Chasers, which is what these are, uh, programmed for the the programming for the Torrent 90 won't interfere with the Storm Chaser programming. You can also run a one queue on one page and run another queue on another page simultaneously, and they'll run simultaneously. Okay. In the word. Uh, if you look here at these little icons, uh, sound active and lock, Oops. and um, the sound active button pretty straightforward. If, it, if I press this, now I can uh, go and use the internal sound active triggering. I click start audio in, and I'll tap here, and you can see the the uh, little level meter moving. You can also, you can actually also just tap right on the screen or on your mouse, um, and it will, uh, it'll, it'll uh, follow the beat that way. There's also a number of different settings that you can use. Uh, you can, you can contour or you can tailor it to the type of music that you're playing. It just changes the uh, response uh, spectrum okay. a little bit. Uh, over here, full fog and haze control. Um, it works very well. It's got a timer, so you can time your haze or your fog if you're using it. Uh, output, fan speed, basically everything you would need to, to use uh, with fog and haze. Over here um, is uh, the strobe control. This is a pretty innovative feature. You don't need to program strobes into your cues. Um, a lot of times, you know, I when I'm programming, I like to use strobe for emphasis, um, and it's nice to be able to do that on the fly. So. Instead of having to program specific chases or cues with strobe, you can just select the button and now if you see the output of the, the light here, it's strobing now. And I let go of it, it's going to go back to normal. So you can vary the, uh, the rate or you can select intensity. And if I dim this down and I do the strobe now, or sorry, the chase now, uh, it'll actually uh, it'll dim the light too. So there's a bunch of different options with that. Okay, and that's a really cool feature. I mean, yeah. a lot of times, you know, if part is coming in the song, you want to strobe it. Exactly. And if you have that access to turn it on, turn it off, and go right back yep. to the scenes you were going, that's yeah. that's kind of a neat feature. Yeah, it's it's not something that um, you see in, I don't think, I can't think of any other piece of software right now that have it, but it is very, very cool. It's especially, you know, if you, if you like to, like, you know, ride your lights live, it's definitely nice to have that um, ability to do that. Uh, in terms of patching the fixtures, super easy. There's a patch button up here. You go to load patch new fixture. Got a pretty uh, all-encompassing fixture library. Uh, if there is uh, 
if there is a fixture that you see that... Oh no, get it off of that one. Yeah. Just kidding, there we go. Oh, there we go. I've got Chauvet has their logo in there and we don't have ours in there. I have to talk to people about that. But uh, if you do see a fixture that uh, isn't included, all you got to do is email us and we'll, uh, we'll build a fixture profile for you. Okay. But um, it's uh, super easy to, uh, to add a fixture. Uh, you just select the fixture you want, select to patch. And actually, I'm right up against the uh, the channel count on here because I had a ton of lights programmed to this. But uh, it'll ask you where you want to start your start the fixture. It gives you the patch map. These are all the currently patched fixtures in blue. Open channels are in the lighter gray, and this has really got a lot of fixtures patched into it. But uh, it's uh, it would be if you're starting from scratch, it wouldn't look like this. Well, yeah. You can also move fixtures around. Um, I'll just drag this one here and see if I can. I can't read. I can't grab it. You can move it to a new start address. Uh, it's not going to let me because I'm trying to patch another one right now and it's too many channels. But um, in the uh, patch mode, you can move them around. Move so around. It's, it's super easy to patch stuff. Also, uh, once you've patched your fixtures, take you over to programming mode here. And if I right click on a fixture, I can view, I can view the start channel. If you have fixtures with, with uh, dip switches, it gives you the dip switch calculator. Okay. You can also easily move your fixtures start channel from here. So I clicked over from playback mode to programming mode here, and we're in the programming mode. The playback mode is super intuitive, super easy to use, and so is the programming. Um, it is so easy to program uh, really complicated things, things that take uh, take a lot of time in other software. Um, this is really designed to take a lot of the uh, take a lot of the kind of difficulty out of programming. So I'll start with a clean slate here, and I'll just show you how easy it is to create a, um, a simple movement. Uh, I'll just pick, I think it's this guy. Yep. So I just uh, selected the fixture that I'm going to program a movement for, which is just Tor 90. And I'm going to go up to the motion effects, the M effects. And as you can see, there's a ton of different built-in movement effects here. You can also create your own. It's really easy. But I'll just pick uh, one that's built already. I'll pick this, uh, this diagonal line. It instantly created a 20-step sequence here. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. There, and you can see now my head over here is uh, doing its thing. There's a fader here for the fade. There's a slider here for the fade time. You can move it up and down, make the fades very long or very short. It's probably a pretty good one. You can also edit these uh, pre-programmed uh, pre-programmed movement macros here. You can shrink them using the sliders on the joystick panel here. You can also recenter them. So say you uh, only want your fixture to move in a particular quadrant, you right click, and uh, now if you'll see I've constrained the movement a lot from where it started. You can also change the number of total steps in the sequence. And if I had more than one fixture patched here um, if, and that I brought along, if you see the step shift and fixture offset, what that allows you to do is if you select more than one fixture and create a, uh, a movement macro, you can change the relative position of each fixture against itself. So if you, you can do things like can-can effects where one fixture moves on the next, then the next, then the next. Super easy. Or to create do. kind of that, that wave effect yep, with the wave. heads. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, here, I'm going to just I'll click on two of them. Two fixtures here. And you can see now I've got two fixtures. And I'll and recenter it. And let's go a little faster. So you see the fixtures are pretty close to each other. I can, uh, I can make it increase the step shift and uh, for ease of seeing this I'm going to just put it on a straight line too so you can see what I'm talking about here. Now the fixtures should uh, directly mirror each other. Let me sort of make clear this. Of course now we've got banging going on too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll increase the step shift here to 10. That's okay. Uh, and now if you see the, fi the two fixtures are moving exactly opposite of each other. Okay. Fixture offset is the number of fixtures doing the same thing. So if you have four fixtures, you want two of them to do one thing, two of them to do the other, you increase the fixture offset to two. And now the first two will act one way, the second two will act. Okay. Uh, similarly, tons of built in, R this actually, it says RGB effects, it actually works with RGBAW fixtures. So it'll make color mix for RGBAW. There's a lot of built in effects, so you can easily be, excuse me, uh, build uh, chase effects with uh, RGBAW. You can also create your own. We had this working at Mobile Beat with, uh, I think, four teams, Storm Chasers, which is an RGBW um, strip effect light. And uh, you should watch Omega's uh, video on those. Yeah, I got a video yeah. on that. That's, and uh, I love those lights. We built a ton of different chases. We had them chasing all over our booth. It looked great. Um, full, uh, 
full RGB color mixing as well, RGB AW color mixing. Uh, and then one more really quick thing that I absolutely love, uh, especially for, for mobile performers who are going from venue to venue pretty much every week or you know, every other weekend, whatever. Uh, if you have moving heads or scanners or anything that you're positioning or, or want to make a preset for, that uh, you're going to want some things to stay the same week, like between all the venues, and some things to change, this position panel is going to be your best friend. What this allows you to do is say, um, for instance, I want to—I have a moving head that I want to spot the cake table with, um, and then I want to write a sequence where I go from the cake table to the dance floor to the head table to the entrance where the grand march is taking place, something like that. I can program a position called cake table, uh, grand march entrance, you know, center stage on the dance floor. I can create one of, the, one of each of those, and it'll and the program will ask what channels you want to save. You save the X and Y coordinates. And uh, then you write your sequences off of that. Now, the next week you're in a different venue, everything's in a different location, but you still want to use that sequence. Or mm -hmm. So you write 20 sequences. All you have to do is update those four positions in here, and it'll propagate to all, your, all the rest of your sequences. So it's a big time save. That's great, yeah. yeah. Um, other than that, uh, one other really neat thing on the playback side, say uh, you have um, accent lighting or up lighting, and you want it to stay the same, you, you have a chase going from, I don't know, you know, amber to pink to yellow, and you want that to go all night, uh, you can you can turn that on and you can press the lock button. Now we can trigger any other sequences we want and that one won't be affected. So you can kind of create zones of playback where things will stay the same and then things will be, uh, okay. things will be moving as well. Yeah. Um, if anybody has any questions, always uh, happy to answer them. Uh, you, can, uh, you can shoot me an email, it's will at blizzardlighting.com. Uh, otherwise, uh, support at blizzardlighting.com and um, We'll get the uh, the real clips gurus on it because I just I apparently can just think on my feet. <laughs> um, but uh, it's a it's a very very nice piece of software, and I really hope that we get a lot of adopters. Uh, it's been it's been doing real well for us so far. Uh, you uh, are looking for a dealer. Uh, ben Still from NLFX was the official uh, dealer here for YouTube DJs Live. Otherwise, uh, look up on our dealer locator for a dealer near you, and I'll hook you up. Hey, and you guys do have a forum now. Yeah, um, yeah, we've had a forum launched about two months ago, um, and uh, we're, we're getting users left and right. That's a great place to, you know, share. Uh, we had a we had an area where you can post pic gig pictures, uh, which I love to see. That makes me really happy seeing people actually out using this stuff. If you have questions, if you have issues, um, we check. We all check it pretty frequently. The guys in tech support check it frequently. Um, we are uh, we're trying to be pretty. You know, we're trying to really be there for our customers. So yeah, the forum is just another way of doing that. Uh, if you, again, if you go to our website, blizzardlighting.com, and you click on forums, it's right there on the front page. It'll take you there. <coughs> get registered and uh, start posting and having fun. And that is something that I just found out here, so I will be Excellent. signing up, signing up today. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been growing really quickly. So, okay. and well, it's thank... probably a good place to watch out for new product announcements too. There you go. <laughs> All right, thanks, Will. Sure, no problem. Thanks, Will from Blizzard Lighting.